Welcome back to Force Education. This is Zap. Today I'm going to be doing a new video on INPX in Pixion. Now I'm going to go through technical analysis briefly and then dive really through the due diligence part. If you'd like to skip ahead through that, please do so. But I believe that technical analysis gives a little bit of a perspective on the psychology of traders. And a quick hint, if you check the description, you might find something you like about a Discord. Let's jump right into it. So on an INPX, uh, what we get to see here on a one week perspective, the chart looks quite ugly, nothing much can be said, I mean it's just a parabolic downwards uh, trend. So what we need to address here in this level is just the quick things. Does the MACD give us anything? No. ADX shows in sloppy, and willing percent R is more around the overbought situation here. Moving averages does look bearish and momentum is actually climbing back up, so that's a good thing. Now on a one day perspective, things get a little bit more interesting. Moving averages have gone from full bearish to bullish somewhere around the 24th. It really started around the 17th. Moving averages almost went fully bullish on the 24th, but it's still below the 50th, sorry, the 200 SMA line. MACD here gives us a little bit of a warning sign. It says, hey, be careful. What you actually might see here is a little bit off a continuation of a pullback or a drop. ADX says, hey, there is a potential for a trend here, and that is bullish. Volume percent R sits at somewhere around neutral, and the momentum looks quite strong. Now, on a two hour perspective, just to give this one a little bit of a push, what we get to see is it's just sideways with the potential of a pullback and nothing more. Moving averages here, they do tend to be a little bit interesting. Sometimes they do trade within it, others, not so much. For the sake of the argument, the moving average band is trading at 1.16 on the top, 1.06 in the bottom. Sorry, on the middle and 95 cents in the bottom. The stochastic fast and the stochastic slow are both telling you to be careful because you might actually see a pullback. And it really mimics two things this area here, this area here. And in both situations, you see they're a bit more different than one another. One of them says, hey, it's actually climbing down, including as well here. So two of them says, hey, we're climbing out and sell, and it does see a pullback, and then it sees a massive jump. This one here, Eventually, it looks like it actually continues to drop. So it might have another leg, and that is a warning sign. At least that's what the stochastic pass is saying, and it's low. Fibonacci retracements, I wanted to do Fibonacci retracements, and I went back to 2016. And pre-split prices are 713,000 per share. And then scroll up to 2019, it was around 918 per share. Scroll even further to 2020, another reverse split less than a year ago at 29.25 a share currently it's sadly way below right here uh so for the sake of argument i still did a fibonacci retracement uh, a little bit of accuracy there error so 1.112 is a fibonacci uh support 1.23 is a significant support oh sorry resistance for a fibonacci retracement followed by 132. now what we can do is we can do another one in this perspective to try to see if it fits any better even though I really doubt it, and we check from the top all the way to the bottom. And sure, 114, 109, 102 are significant supports, 119, 127, and 136 are significant resistances. Now it comes into a bit more of the traditional line. Significant supports and resistances, 115 is a significant support, below there, 112, below there we're looking at 109, and then 106, 104, and then down to 98 cents. Significant resistances, 120. And then below there, oh, sorry, above there, we're looking at 124. And then, of course, to the 136. But before there, yeah, 126, 136. Now comes into the news and the part of DDs that a lot of you have been waiting for. So, in Pixon, I believe around somewhere around June or July, I kind of. Uh, first had my eyes on this one and it's been one of these stocks that i'm thinking well if you th if you've ever watched black mirror this is one of them and the biggest thing about this one here is indoor mapping indoor positioning indoor security and indoor an analytics and think about it as if you want to know every single thing that is happening inside and every single asset that is moving or where someone is you can easily track them down it's kind of a little bit of a scary uh I would say dystopian kind of movie where, hey, if you want to know where Jack is from IT, well, you pull up your phone, well, you know he's on the third floor. So that's the kind of levels we're looking at. They have both uh, sensors, third-party sensors, indoor wayfinding. So 
Uh, if you've ever used like an indoor museum wayfinding, that's kind of something I've been before. Outdoor and indoor navigations from in there. Um, assets tracking, that's what I'm talking about. But for security firms, that could be actually quite significant. Device detections, geofencing, and map uh, profiles. So that is more of an in uh, interesting industry here and featured in multiple different kind of industries. And one of the things that they have in terms of technology, so one of them is the Impixon pod, and that's one of their sensors. It detects the presence of Wi-Fi devices and it builds a solid Wi-Fi position solutions. And so how it works is basically compact and lightweight. It easily looks and scans it towards the indoor spaces um, through basically checking in access point systems, or sorry, working with access point systems as well, to visualize the presence and the location and movement of Wi-Fi devices. So you have a phone, it can, or usually a phone or a smartwatch, whatever, it can actually um, translate to visitor analytics. And sometimes that's actually quite useful, especially when you're thinking about, let's say, Best Buy, whatnot, retails, Walmart. Uh, usually what they have is more of a sensor at the door and every time you enter it scans in how many people enter the store for analytical purposes. Um, if you're not sure about what I'm talking about, as someone who worked in retail, they usually have a, a, an automatic sensor counter for how many people entered in and they compare it to a transaction. As you can get to see, I have a little bit of experience in retail, unfortunately. They don't get treated the best the so next time, especially in Black Friday, you know, crack a smile. Say hi, how you doing? Anyway. Key benefits, extend coverage, um, superior accuracy, flexible installation. Some of these items, some of these devices we had in terms of sensors, wasn't that ac wasn't that accurate. It would count sometimes people twice if they moved back and forth. So, there's that. Wi-Fi, BLE, and, cell and cellular all in one sensor, and that's how it works for the Impixon Sensor 4000. What does that mean? So many types of devices, and this one basically gives a 360 tra uh, degree transmission. And it looks for comprehensive Wi-Fi and Bluetooth solutions. So not only Wi-Fi, Bluetooth and cellular. So this might be even a better solution. Now the downside of this one is it doesn't track, track humans, track cellular. So let's say someone comes in with three phones, because God knows why. Uh, or some, someone comes in with a smartwatch and a phone, whatnot. Sometimes it can track it twice. I'm pretty sure there's settings to understand basically proximity. So there's that. Powerful sensor built for all indoors location based use cases. And this one is basically all in all. The Impixon Sensor Alta, which basically has UW, uh, UWB tracking and comprehensive price, uh, sorry, device and detection and positioning. Sorry about saying sorry a lot, I'm Canadian, so it's by habit. High accuracy asset tracking, as we said, comprehensive device detection and positions, and small form factor to create a little bit of a higher frequency. That's what I was talking about. So they have a solution for that as well. Hardware solutions to meet your specific needs, and that's for tags, third-party sensors, and more. It could be a rest band that basically looks more like a smartwatch in my perspective, but it looks just like a rest band. Another one is just an essential rest band for that kind of fobs. I've worked with different companies that require key fobs or card fobs. Um, almost every single engineer firm I've worked for did counter basically a fob that you kind of hit the door at or like there's a device on the side and it just opens so looks like they have as well solutions for that and some of it is more of tracking or just key fobs in general next is the industries they have corporate government healthcare retail hospitality transportation correctional facilities and more and i can see every single one Corporate, well, as I said, the key fobs situation, uh, if you want to know where, where John is from IT, you can track him down. You know, I mean, where's the IT guys when you need them? Governments, um, especially for high security, and sometimes you don't need, to, you shouldn't be wondering about. Um, and I believe I did attend, I did attend a conference, uh, or not a conference, it was a meeting um, in a government building, and they give you this tracker, basically, or this device that has to stay with you all times. And if you wander about, they will track you down. And they'll make sure, you know, you don't go anywhere you're not belonging to. Area 51? No, I'm just kidding. Healthcare. Um, hospitals, doctors. Sometimes you need to track a doctor in terms of case of emergencies. They used to use peepers before. Now cell phones. Sometimes you need to know exactly where they are. Just in case you know where your assets are. Instead of tracking them down with paper trails or whatnot. Retail. I did already mention this. Hospitality. Um, I 
I guess uh, something like a resort counting the number of locations that are most used or in a cruise to see which things m make more sense. I have no idea. Analytics, etc. Okay, you kind of get the picture. Latest news is their $10 million registered direct offering. I'll go to that in a second after the presentation. So in terms of the presentation, I'll go to firstly towards their technology, market size, highlights, and then divers a little bit towards their product, even though I explained a lot of it. So I think I'm going to be skipping a lot more than just one part in this presentation. Excuse me. Sorry. Technology, core indoors positioning technology, plus recent complementary technology acquisition helped develop a highly secure, robust, and comprehensive indoors intelligence solutions. Extensible, uh, sorry, ex extensible platform with technology agnist architecture. Market size, large, fast growing and underserved market. Multiple research firms forecasting global market revenues of double digits in billion and 17 to 53% CAGR. Highlights, growing customers base and global reseller network. Wrong IP, broad patent portfolio, He's an executive team with proven track records, highly scalable, high margin business models, revenues for fiscal 2019 increased 68% compared to fiscal 2018. Gross margin, gross margin, I have problems saying gross. Gross margin increased to 74% in 2019 versus 71% in 2018. Uh, a little bit alright, approximately 39% million in cash and cash equivalents as of June 30, 2020. And by the end of this week, next week, it will probably be 49. Thanks, $10 million registered offering. Next is redefining the indoors, whether mapping, positioning, security, and analytics. I've already explained a lot about this one. And a bit about this one here is they basically said, hey, you can use it with COVID-19. Physical distancing, contact tracing, sanitation and cleaning, temperature reading, and analytical reports. I'll talk a bit more about their COVID uh, vaccine uh, integration with... The technology they have yeah zone health physical distancing and seating planning with contract tracing for people sanitations and cleaning records so you got device people and assets all working together basically with analyticals and positions so just data from proprietary iot and third-party resources it integrates it with data analytic engines patent patented algorithms and advanced mapping technology Give context to and visualize indoor data creating location awareness. So it, the way it works is you got mapping, on-device sensors, RFS signals, video, big data, and customer interaction with everything in between, whether it's wayfinding, contextual actions, analytical, locating, security, and maps. So in theory, you can have these in stores to see if someone actually is stealing instead of, you know, uh, walking behind them if you're a person of color and some places in unfortunately around the world people get stereotyped a lot so maybe this technology can help a little anyway create location awareness enrich business insights create safer indoor spaces uncover data patterns and trends and realize work well efficiencies now some of their customers around the world hall of america fedex ew the pentagon uh united states uh, veteran veteran affairs i believe i Westfield, Desjardins, which is also more of a banking service or financial uh, service. Banjid al Futum, whatever. Uh, and then you got U.S. Air Force, U.S. Army Force. Hey, where is the Space Force? They gotta need this. Anyway. <laughs> IBM, USI, TPP, MTG, uh, Cisco, the list goes on. Indoor positioning, positioning and navigation. It's estimated to have $56.60 billion in 2027. Indoor locations is around $17 billion market in 2025. Wi-Fi analytics, $16.8 billion market. And LBS and RTLS is $39 billion market. The big question is, how good is this company about reaching that target and taking a bit of that market share? And I really hope it's a lot. Now, moving on towards institutional buyers, etc., SEC filings, the juicy stuff. Currently, they have a $10 million registered offering uh, at $1.25 $1 per share. And it's expected to occur on 30, November 30, uh, basically the closing will expect to be around there. So we got until Monday to have everything pushed through. Moving on, they were selected by leading pharmaceutical corporate to facilitate tracking of COVID-19 vaccine related assets. Who? We're not exactly sure who it is. 
threat they say they're leading. So is it Moderna? Is it Pfizer? Is it AstraZeneca with their, after they released their vaccine? We don't know. For all we know, uh, the data here is, or the information here is very vague. Uh, the way it's going to work is that it's going to have, they're going to track critical COVID-19 vaccine related assets. Um, it's a little bit of a shorter term contract, but hey, you're going to take everything you can. Assets increased quite a lot from 6.7 thousand to 35 thousand. And then we're looking at a total liability of somewhere around the same total liability and equity is around double their revenue, a little bit more. So I guess that's a lot better. But when you look at 2020 to 2019, it's very much almost comparable, especially the gross profits. Now, the cost of revenue has doubled, almost doubled, and so has the revenue, almost thousand dollar more your net or your gross profit is around 1.9 thousand your total operating expense is around 8.1 thousand that is concerning because your expenses are increasing year per year 2020 to 2019 and your loss for operations is 6.2 thousand now we're talking about thousands not a million so it's not that concerning uh sorry this is 6.2 million um i forgot that this is mentioned in thousands 6.2 million so that is quite a lot compared to 5.8. So that is concerning. Your net loss, you're looking at 7.4 million compared to 6.5. You get to see where the, why they need to have offerings, etc. They are in a net loss, even though their net loss per share is now 0.18. Back at the amount of shares. They had 519,000 shares. Right now they have 41.5 million shares. A massive increase and that is concerning because they're going to continue on doing reverse splits and offerings and i hate to see a company with such potential get thrown out like that some of the recent milestones hey maybe this will give us a little bit off a better insight they acquired nanotron and i'm going to go through that in a second october 2020 acquisition increases revenue and is expected to be a creative to uh, sorry accredited to earnings acquired blue dot on device positioning technology and intellectual property property assets in august 2020 expanding expense uh, indoor intelligence capabilities on mobile buyers devices they acquired an exclusive global distribution and development license for cys pat and sigma plot software impox rf, RF videos connector integrated into gentech security center omnicast for sensor uh, fusion enabled video Participated in CNN, moderated Reclaim Your Workplace, creating a resist resilient environment post-pandemic roundtable. Expanded Latin America reach, executed sales and distribution agreement with um, uh, importer and distributor Gascom. Impixon and FSI team for uh, facility management solutions incorporating intelligent maps to combat COVID-19. Impixon and CX APP collaborate on desk booking enterprise campus apps plus multi-technology social distancing and contract tracing methodologies designed to reduce COVID-19 infections. Received FCC certification for ultra-wideband modules. All right, so 100% of Nanotron is theirs now. And first thing I did was I wanted to check who are they? What do they do? A little bit vague, but let's take a stab at it. Nanotron is a leading provider of electronics location awareness solutions. If knowing what, where, and when is mission, mission clit, uh, critical to your business, rely on Nanotron for locating running. Nanotron solutions deliver precise position data augmented by context information in real time. Honestly, it looks very much of the same business of NPIX. They just merge their solutions. Whether it's safety zones, 360, it all sounds almost the same. They just continued on with advancing the technology and combining forces. Um, and so, hey, it is uh, beneficial. Hopefully, they can reduce their expenses and increase their revenues. Institutional buyers, Vanguard had 106,000. Other than that, it's been, been mixed. Morgan Stanley has around 39,000 shares. So, a little bit new. So, at the current level, in this week, no institutional transactions that were significant. Insider buyers... I haven't touched this one all the way since 2017. All right, Ed, what do you think about this one? 
I'm gonna be frank, I really love this company itself in terms of uh, concepts and whatnot. But I learned not to marry a stock. And at the time where I considered buying it first, I believe it was all the way back in May. And I wanted to buy it at 1.10. And hey, it dipped and I think around this situation I wanted to buy it and I couldn't. And then I saw it jump to 215. And I thought, you know what, it's gonna continue going. And then it just continued to crash. At this level, I still think it's it's kind of worth it if you wanna you are fine losing your money. Because let's say a year ago you thought about this company and you're like, you know what? I think this one has a beneficial uh place in here. You would have bought around $1.64, maybe even $29.25 around January. But let's say if you had bought it around the Mar around February, okay, or even March dip. Probably about around 125. It's still decreasing, even though it had this COVID kind of stuff. So in the future, I really hope this one to see a really massive push. I'm very skeptical about this one. It's a penny stock in that nature. And so it's going to be, I'm not going to say it's not going to rise again. It's definitely going to rise again. Pumpers are going to love this one because there's a lot of material here that they can pump. If they can convince their followers to, hey, buy this. This is the next level one. But for me, investment, no. Trading, volumes capping, sure. Because I guess I'm, when you're throwing money at this, have the potential of, hey, I might lose it. What do you think about this sticker? Make sure to mention down in the comments below. Share, subscribe, and like, and you have a wonderful day. And if you want to join my Discord, it's in the description below. There's limited seats, so hop right on it. Have a good day.